Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Graham. Good morning, Graham. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. We have a new song to start today. I will set my bow in the clouds. Let's just stay seated and we'll join in with the band and Mandy as best we can um, in singing it through before the service today and then we'll sing it again all together later. like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land where we gather today, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I'd like to pay our respects to the Elders past, present and emerging and pledge our ongoing commitment to reconciliation and justice for First Peoples and others in this land. Rainbows delight and surprise us. Our breath pausing, we stand under the beauty of the Creator's promise of unfailing love. Colours of joy beaming onto us, recalling us to remember, to turn, to believe the good news. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Let us pray. God of beautiful rainbows, mirroring the myriad colours of your marvellous creation, we are drawn together in the dance of your unfailing love. Thank you for attracting us with your beauty and goodness. Inspire us to treasure each day as a fresh start in our shared life in you. Amen. Stand and sing together this kingdom.
Welcome everyone here in this place and on Zoom. We are fortunate we have got power, we have got internet and we have got Richard on the desk and other techies here who, who mean that we can uh, include Joyce and Don and Jean and Janet and Jen and my mum and AA135 and Lauren and David and another phone caller uh, as part of the group here. And um, I can't see any Barchams on the screen there today. <laughs> <laughs> because they're here. Must have been drawn in by the pancake day, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> it is the first Sunday of the season of Lent. And so last Tuesday was officially Pancake Day, followed by Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent. So we're going to do a little catch-up this morning on, the, uh, on our fundraising and celebrate Pancake Day morning tea. You might have noticed all the, the beautiful uh, setup out there. It's a great fundraiser for the caring work of the Uniting Church Community Service Agency. Just in case people are still confused... Uniting is a combination of the old Uniting Care with other agencies of um, Uniting Church Community Service and it all got rebranded simply as Uniting Victaz. And the funds raised are um, used by Uniting Victaz to help some of the most vulnerable and marginalised people in our communities. These range from emergency relief for families facing food crisis to supporting homeless people into permanent accommodation and from finding work for people with disability to supporting those newly arrived needing safety and a welcoming community. Uniting is a big organisation and does a lot of really, really helpful stuff for, um, for people in need in our community. Um, on behalf of um, our church, and um, we continue to wrestle with ways that congregations and church people can interact and relate with our community service agencies. But however that's going, their work is really valuable. And so thank you to all the people who've put in a lot of effort this morning to set us up for our fundraiser so we could make our contribution. Hopefully the pancakes today will remind us of this season of Lent that we're moving into and the opportunities that we have to reflect on and reinvigorate the ways in which we walk with God 
and we love our neighbour. Our prayer of adoration and confession has some responses in the conf confession time that you might join in. Let us pray. God of truth, we praise you for your covenant with us and all creation and for all the colours of your blessings, for the reds and yellows of your unconditional and costly love, for the pinks and greens of your creativity and compassion, for the oranges and purples of your grace and understanding, and for the blue of your faithfulness. In wonder and joy we praise you. God of all, when we abuse your covenant with us and we are complacent, forgive us and help us to make a fresh start. When we trash your creation ruthlessly and selfishly, forgive us and help us to make a fresh start. When we reject your call to live well and generously, forgive us and help us to make a fresh start. And when we take your love for granted, Forgive us and help us to make a fresh start. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. Through the mercy of Christ, God remembers you, but not your faults or your sins. Sisters and brothers, hear the good news. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's stand and sing together what a friend we have in Jesus. But would you guys like to come in down the front and have a chat with us too? In fact, oh, can I get down and get up again? I can. Look at that, how impressive is that? <laughs> Lovely to see you too. And your names have slipped out of my brain. I had them in mind last week. Remind us again. Felix. Felix Scarlet. and Scarlett. And this is Jonathan here. Who is this here? Charlie. Charlie, beg your pardon. 
Felix and Scarlett. And um, we usually get a quick little bit of news from Charlie about his week. You might like to tell us a highlight of something that's happened in your school or life this week, something good that you'd like to tell us about. Charlie, have you got any updates for us? Uh, yesterday I had a sleepover birthday party, but it was only till 8 o'clock and then I went home. I made a bow and arrow down there. Whoa. That a looks... Sleep, a sleep under the scout hall. So lots of activities, including making... Slept under the scout hall and made bow and arrow. Oh, you know, the Robin Hood story was one of my favourite stories as a boy. And I tried to make bow and arrows, but they were never as fine as that one. That's just really good bamboo, bamboo isn't it? Don't pull it too tight because Sandra might not get to have her pancake today. <laughs> <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Just, just point it this way, I reckon. <laughs> okay, sorry? Only if I let go. Yes, only if you let go. Um, that's magnificent work. So we're here, Felix, have you ever made a rainbow? Uh, rainbow. Oh, rainbow's on my brain. A um, bow and arrow? No. No, no. Uh, did you have anything exciting this week happen? I did get a cool bandage from my dad for my... Look at that. Spray. <laughs> Look at that. Very cool bandage. Thank you. Scarlett, anything going on? Today I'm having a... I'm going to a birthday party. You've got a birthday party to go to today. Mm -hmm. Oh, lovely. Good. Well, don't eat too many pancakes at morning tea here because there might be some nice things at the birthday party. Now, you guys... Party. It's a trampoline party. Oh, well, you can eat as much as you like because you'll be burning it all off. <laughs> or bring... Yeah, no. Can you guys see the picture on the screen that... Now it's not a um, it's not a bow and arrow, but it's a symbol from. Oh, would you guys like to sit on the chairs? You don't. Want, oh, thanks, Charlie. I'll sit on that. Then. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know what it is? Do you know what that symbol is on the screen? Or could you guess what that symbol is on the screen? What do you think? A roof from a house. It does look like that. And you could build a house from that. What's it look like to you, Felix? A snake. Looks a snake. Yeah, it could be that. What do you think, Charlie? I had it in my mind, but I forgot. So it, it, a boomerang. Yeah, it's a boomerang from, um, from Aboriginal art. So see the next slide tells us the answer there. It says it's a boomerang. Now, this next one is a little bit... A little bit trickier. It looks a bit similar. What do you, what's it look like to you? A worm. A worm. Do we love worms in the garden? Yes. Yeah. A person. A person. You, you said that very confidently, Felix. It's because I learned about it in year two. I thought you might have, because Charlie did similar. You learned about Aboriginal art and symbols yeah. in year two. And and one of them was next door to me in year two and we came into their classroom and learned a bit about it. And you I, did. I learned the symbol but I forgot what it was. Yeah, but it won't take you long to relearn them sometime. So yes, that is a person in Aboriginal um, artwork. Now we're, we're moving off the Aboriginal art now and to another symbol to see can't see it on that one, but uh, okay. What's that, do you reckon, Charlotte? A bus. A bus? And I'm not Sally, I'm Scarlet. You call me Sally. <laughs> Sorry, Scarlet. <laughs> I always get mixed up. Do you? Do people often call you Charlotte instead of Scarlet? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'll probably be one of those people. <laughs> Sorry, I'll try not to be. Uh, Yep, I reckon that looks a symbol for a bus, doesn't it? See what the answer says on the next one? Yeah. Or a bus stop. Yeah. What's the next one? What's that a symbol for? Uh, Aeroplane or, or an airport. What's the answer? Yeah, an airport symbol. What's the next symbol? 
Ooh. Oh. <laughs> does everybody out here know what that was? Yes, everybody does. What do you reckon? On and off symbol. On and off symbol. The, the Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Oh, power button, yeah. So it's the on and off power button. Yeah. Next one. <laughs> Tell us one. Can I say both? Oh, all right then, Charlie. McDonald's and Target. McDonald's and Target, that's what their symbol's for. And what's the next one? What's that? A, a bird. It's a bird, and it's a particular type of bird. A dove. Very good, a dove, yeah. I think it's a symbol of peace. Indeed, beautifully done. So the meaning of it, it's a symbol of a bird, a dove, that represents a few things. And peace is one of the really key ones. The next one, oh my goodness. <laughs> what can you see there, Scarlett? A rainbow. A rainbow. Now, do you know that was a very clever photographer by the name of Graham took that photo? <laughs> um, it was the end of January when we were down in Tassie and, and we are having a... Um, having dinner on the, the rooftop of the place we're staying at. I'm looking out over the Derwent River and this rainbow just goes magnificently across there. So I took about a million photos and that's the best one. Can you see a rainbow anywhere in the church at the moment? Apart from on the screen? Something represent you can you think you can see rainbow stuff? Um that. Over there. Yeah, we've got a rainbow uh, symbol on the side of our cross there because today's Bible story um, finishes with a rainbow and it has a pretty special important meaning for people reading the Bible. Yes, we I think I had it in my children's Bible. So when um, God said he was going to make the world a flood, um, he asked Noah and his friends to make an ark. And then when it, the storm was over, he made a rainbow in the sky to represent that he was not going to make it flood ever again. That's beautifully summarised, Charlie. Spot on. Very well done. Um, so today we're not going to be reading the story of Noah and the flood. We're just going to be reading and thinking about the meaning of that promise that God made, um, which has to do with the fact that God loves us and wants to find good ways to help us with our lives. And so the rainbow is a reminder to God and to us. Now one more slide for me to show off on. This is the view, yes. <laughs> I think that's a sunset. It was, it was sunset. It was the same weekend as I got the rainbow photo, looking out the other side of the place we were staying at, towards Mount Wellington. You can see in the distance on the right-hand side above those buildings, there was this superb sunset and amazing clouds going on. Now, I'm throwing that in to show off another reasonable photo that I took. And also because a cloud is sometimes a symbol of God being with us and, and through the Old Testament. Yes, Joe. I think I also had this in my Bible. I read quite a lot, like half of it yesterday. Um, when they had the war, um, God was in a cloud next to them, very low, and it, well, it could have been Jesus, but... Um, it was to represent that he was nearby them and even though they might have died, um, it would have represented that it was good for them to try. Spot on. Beautiful. Good, good place for us to finish our chat today. I don't know, Sue might have some ideas about rainbows and making today if, if you two want to join Charlie and do some crafty things or, or stay, in here with, um, stay in here with your mum. Yes, Scott? 
You love craft things. Very good. Do you like making... I won't (laughs) preempt. So so we're going to sing again this song that starts off with talking about God's rainbow in the sky. And then it talks about other symbols that God gives to us that are ones that we're going to think about over the next few weeks leading up to Easter because they're all ones that help prepare us specifically for, for the story of Jesus dying and rising again. So thank you. Lovely to have Felix and uh, Charlotte. Scarlett. Scarlett here. And Jonathan. That was good. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Thanks, you guys. And let's sing together. I will set my bow in the clouds. So Peter Thomas gets to do three readings today because we start with the, uh, the bit about the covenant with Noah and then we have a little bit from an epistle that reflects on the meaning of that and connects it to Jesus and then we have uh, a very quick little telling of Jesus' baptism and temptation and starting of his teaching. In Mark's gospel, everything happens quickly and urgently, so there's no long temptation story today. Just straight into it. Thanks, Peter. Spirit, I guess. Um, so here's the slightly longer version from what the kids told us. This, so this is Genesis chapter 9, uh, verses 8 to 17, immediately after the uh, end of the flood. God said to Noah and his sons, I am now making my covenant with you and with your descendants and with all living beings, all birds and all animals, everything that came out of the boat with you. With these words... I make my covenant with you. I promise that never again will all living beings be destroyed by a flood. Never again will a flood destroy the earth. As a sign of this everlasting covenant, which I am making with you and with all living beings, I am putting my bow in the clouds. It will be the sign of my covenant with the world. Whenever I cover the sky with clouds and the rainbow appears, I will remember my promise to you and to all the animals that a flood will never again destroy all living beings. When the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between me and all living beings on earth. 
That is the sign of the promise which I am making to all living beings. So the letter today is from the first letter of Peter, uh, chapter 3, verses 18 to 22. And prior to this passage, the writer has been talking about how um, suffering unjustly is regarded by the writer, at least, as something very uh, valuable. So 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 to 22. For Christ died for sins once for, and for all, a good man on behalf of sinners in order to lead you to God. He was put to death physically, but made alive spiritually. And in his spiritual existence, he went and preached to the imprisoned spirits. These were the spirits of those who had not obeyed God when he waited patiently during the days that Noah was building the boat. The few people in the boat, eight in all, were saved by the water, which is a symbol pointing to baptism, which now saves you. It is not the washing off of bodily dirt, but the promise made to God from a good conscience. It saves you through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone to heaven and is at the right side of God, ruling over all angels and heavenly authorities and powers. And the Gospel is Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. So Mark, of course, opens with John uh, preaching and baptising in the desert, and then this bit. Not long afterwards, Jesus came from Nazareth in the province of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. As soon as Jesus came up out of the water, he saw heaven opening and the Spirit coming down on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my own dear son, I am pleased with you. At once the spirit made him go into the desert where he stayed 40 days being tempted by Satan. Wild animals were there also, but angels came and helped him. After John had been put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee and preached the good news from God. The right time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Turn away from your sins and believe the good news. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. A loving God, please open our hearts and minds to hear the word you have for each of us this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we bring back my um, rainbow pick, please? There it is. Can anybody see where that rainbow starts? You probably can't unless you're really familiar with the look of around the do it. There's a little thing, little building religious building poking up on the far left there, which is the cathedral. And it, the rainbow goes all the way across the water to Sandy Bay. And what is it on the edge of the water on Sandy Bay where it's... Uh, the Rest Point there? Casino. It is the Rest Point Casino. So the rainbow goes all the way from the cathedral to the uh, casino which I was very amused by, as well as uh, gobsmacked by. So I shared it on the, the Bartley Wider Family WhatsApp group. My sister-in-law, good Catholic family background, says, ooh, what does it mean? Hmm, I speculated and replied, am I being called to the roulette table? <laughs> That Irish thing of the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow was a fun thought and I thought a funny comment, but nobody in my family thought it was funny enough to justify a response. <laughs> so it just sort of sat there. Oh, well. So the rainbow symbol has a wide range of meanings, as you know, for people now. Hope and luck, acceptance and appreciation of diversity. 
Did you know that in Native American religions, rainbows were seen as bridges for the deities between the heavenly and the earthly realms? But what does it mean for the story of God and God's people in the Bible? It's, it's really a really significant point in the Bible and the, uh, the, the, the meaning that uh, our biblical storytellers telling this flood story draw out of it um, is in the background of, uh, f- of everything for us. And, uh, and, and particularly in the passion story when Jesus refuses or throughout Jesus' life when he refuses to use force and violence to impose um, God's kingdom. So it's a challenging one for us in a lot of ways. The very specific meaning, just as Charlie said, after flooding the earth and destroying most of its living beings because human behaviour had been violent and appalling, God makes a promise to never again do that. The rainbow in the sky would remind God of that promise and by implications be a reminder to us. And there's two questions to wrestle with today that are, are, are one, relate to the, the big questions of why does God allow suffering and evil uh, to continue? Firstly, why would God do that? promise not to use a big flood, a big violent action to wipe out evil again, because the violent action worked perfectly well, didn't it? God got rid of all the evil human beings, but kept a handful of good people to start all over. The violence and destruction of the flood was very effective, which is why it's such a popular solution for humans, of course, especially when we're confronted with violence and evil. Let's get rid of it with more powerful violence. So why would God Almighty make a promise to ditch that violence option while demanding nothing in return as well? And the second question is, if God won't crush evil and violence with greater violence, what does God do about evil and violence instead? Well, the biblical answers have something to do with the practice in the ancient world of making covenants. People in neighbouring countries, neighbouring peoples, were used to making covenants with each other that allowed them to live their lives freely and productively without worrying about the next bunch of um, uh, Philistines who were going to come across the border and and hurt them all and steal all their stuff. A covenant in the ancient world was similar to what we in the modern world would call a contract or a treaty. Each covenant established the basis of a relationship conditions for that relationship, promises, consequences if those if conditions were not met. We get close to that. Our, our closest thing to a covenant these days would be marriage. We don't have a contract unless you do a prenup contract. But marriage is a covenant. We need to make promises as to how this relationship is going to work. But in this first covenant in the Bible, this covenant with all living beings, there's just one single profound promise which God Almighty offers as the new beginning after the flood, the reset after the flood wipeout, starting all over again. And God just makes the one promise. And in my understanding of that, it's because God wants good and right relationships more than anything and wants them based on grace, not force. So I don't know how helpful this story would be 
for you, but it might. It reminds me of a moment early in my ministry as a school chaplain. So you know I was a school teacher for 10 years before I trained to be a minister. So back when I was just a young teacher, some of my junior secondary classes could feel like they were getting out of control. And I discovered the very effective way of stopping the bad behaviour and regaining control. Rip in to one misbehaving student with loud, harsh criticism and a significant punishment. Would that have worked in your classes, Lynn, do you reckon? Possibly. <laughs> Let the whole class know I was fed up and I was dangerous and make them all grateful that I wasn't picking on them. But then I finished school teaching and I, I, and I did 10 years training and working as a congregational minister. Then I was called back into schools to be the God person, the chaplain in the school. And fairly early on, I decided uh, I couldn't use that rip into one student technique anymore. I'd only ever used it sparingly, I promise you, earlier. But when I started to use it at Scotch Open, I thought, I can't do this anymore. It's still very effective in the moment if I use it. It quietens the class down, settles them down, gets them back on the job. It's a, it's a big reset. Um, but it just felt wrong. I felt it was potentially too harmful to some relationships with students who might be most in need of care from their chaplain. I thought, they're just not going to be brave enough to talk to me for another three years if I treat them or somebody in their class like that, even in the good cause of having an orderly, settled, productive class. So I ditched it and I used other approaches, usually not as effective, and accepted that sometimes teaching religious education to year nines on a Friday afternoon was going to be a bit chaotic. But it was the right choice. Because God, I think, I believe, I believe we're taught God prioritises relationships. And the Bible story that God, the Bible story communicates that by God making covenants with people to establish relationships and develop relationships, that's how God does it. And God acts graciously to renew those relationships when the covenant partners mess it up and things go bad. Let's just wind back a little bit to the interesting way that the um, flood story connects with the creation story. In the first creation story in the Bible, God creates everything over six days, stopping regularly to admire the work and note that it is good. And now people in the ancient world imagined some kind of dome or firmament above their flat land, holding up the ocean of heaven above the sky over the earth. So the first days of creation included putting that firmament in place to separate the waters above from the waters below. And they also imagine an ocean below the surface of the earth. So <clears throat> our creation story, day one, let there be light. Day two, separating the waters above from the waters below. And day three, separating the land from these waters. And the waters represent chaos, uncontrollable chaos. So God has created order out of the chaos that was just scary oceans everywhere to start with. And then God can fill in the details. Day four, the sun, the moon and the stars 
Day five, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea. Day six, humans and animals on the land. It's a beautiful picture of God creating order and creating the framework for life to, to flourish. And every step was good. God saw that it was good. But then, as you know, Adam and Eve choose to do things their own way rather than God's way. And then their son murders their other son. And then violence becomes commonplace everywhere. God is appalled. And God then reverses what God has set up in order to start again. The waters above and the waters below come crashing in and flood the earth. Gets rid of all that evil and violence. And God resets everything and starts again with the few survivors. And the promise of this covenant... Yeah, I won't do it that way again. So as the biblical story continues, God makes more specific covenants over time as God seeks to counter evil and violence and to enable human flourishing. And a key part of it is by calling a particular people to be a light and be a blessing for the world but not through violence so over the next few weeks of Lent we're going to reflect on those covenants that we, we sang about in the song that the band taught us today and that come up in our lectionary readings and it'll help us I hope to contemplate our own relationship with God and to revisit the covenant in Jesus, which we believe is the ultimate way that God resets and renews creation without violence or force. And today's gospel reading told how it began for Jesus. Mark's gospel is really focused on Jesus fighting evil, casting out demons, curing illnesses, standing up to corruption. But at the start, what we get is Jesus baptised in the waters of the Jordan River. He goes under and rises again for us as he will do again at the end. He will go under and die in three days and rise again. Straight after his baptism, what did the reading say? Out to the wilderness for 40 days. That's an interesting number. Another connection with Noah. For 40 days... And he's tempted to avoid the path of suffering and death that he's called to on the way to resurrection. And he's tempted to use his powers in ways that are contrary to God's gracious covenant making. Do it himself, his own strength with power and force. So he emerges from that time in the wilderness that time of temptation where angels help him and the word of God helps him to resist those temptations and he calls people back to relationship with God and he proclaims that God's kingdom of justice and peace is very close. So during Lent... One of our challenges is to remember the rainbow, to remember God's covenant with us. Our baptism 
is the sign that we belong to a God who saves by grace through faith, not by overpowering violence. And our baptism is our commissioning to share in God's mission of overcoming evil with goodness and love. You're not saved by violence that overpowers evil. You are saved by baptism through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we worship God with our offering, let's sing together, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. The big thing, you might have seen this one in the news this week, the giant koala, not big, it's giant. Um, the giant koala is in Dadswell Bridge, Victoria. Dadswell Bridge and Pomonal were severely affected by the bushfires on Tuesday. So we thought it would be a good idea to visit this big thing as we think of those who have lost so much in the bushfires this week. This enormous mars marsupial monument was created in 1989 by a Dutch designer, ben van, ben van Zetten. It stands 14 metres high, eight metres wide, and weighs 12 tonnes. Its body is made of bronze and supported by a steel frame. And this week, the, the giant koala made it into the news as it was the place where some of the locals sheltered as the fires burned around them. Okay, on with our birthdays. We have one birthday this week, it's Andrew's. On Wednesday, I believe. So let's sing happy birthday to Andrew.
you have a lovely day on Wednesday. Okay, there are a few notices this week. Shuttle notices are due today and they're due to Mandy. So if you've sent them to Cheryl, you better send them to Mandy as well because um, uh, Mandy will not be able to access Cheryl's emails. Um, coffee cup challenge is actually due today. It finishes today. Um, if you've placed your money in the plate, that's great. Um, if you haven't placed it in the plate, you can give it to us after church, but please make sure that it's labelled as coffee cup challenge. Pancake day is today. We've heard a bit about it this morning uh, and it's um, out here ready for you. So um, the idea is that you come over to one of the fry pans when you're ready and, um, or when they're ready, <laughs> whichever is going first, um, and you get your pancake and then over this end of the hub um, is the um, table with all the condiments. Uh, there is also a container there for your uh, donation. It's a gold coin donation. But if you feel like throwing in a bit more than a gold coin, you're like, if you've only got notes, you can throw those in too. We don't mind. Um, sofa is on this Wednesday. So if you're one of the sofa people, you can talk to Peter Thomas for more information about that. Graham will not be here on Friday. Um, so don't come looking for Graham this Friday. And the World Day of Prayer is on this Friday, uh, sorry, not this Friday, Friday week um, on the 1st of March. And it's one o'clock and it's at the Anglican one down at Glen Huntley. If you're looking for more information about that, you can see Graham or Jean. Or Jill. Or Jill. There you go, three people to see. I believe that's all the notices. So for prayers of the people, the first part consists of a series of phrases and uh, after I say the opening phrase, I invite you to respond with, we praise you. Let's pray. Living God, with the crescent moon and the rising sun, we praise you. With the singing birds and the roaring waves, we praise you. With your creatures in the forests and the creatures in the fields, we praise you. With our friends and family around our tables and our brothers and sisters around our world, we praise you. For your promises, your love and your faithfulness, we praise you. Loving God, we pray for those exploring faith, for those preparing for baptism and for those around the world who are persecuted for their religion. May they know the good news of the kingdom. We pray for the world that you love so much and for those who have the power to bring peace to the nations. May they work with truth and integrity. We pray for our community and those who are in need, for the fragile and the vulnerable and for those who support and care for them. May they feel the presence of Jesus walking with them. We pray for those who are homeless for those who are unemployed and for those who will go hungry and thirsty today. May we in Christ draw near to bring comfort and support. We pray for ourselves, for strength to commit ourselves to follow in your way, Lord, and the grace to withstand temptation. May we grow closer to you as we journey through Lent and prepare to meet Jesus at the cross Amen. We belong to God. Let's stand and sing.
Go now and live in the spirit of your baptism, even when you are led into wild and hard places. With repentance and trust, give yourselves to God, and with fasting and prayer, strengthen yourselves against the ways of the tempter. And may God enfold you in tender and lasting love. May Christ be beside you in times of struggle. And may the Spirit guide you back to the path whenever you stray, that you may keep the covenant. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.